Hey, I'm AJ. I'm Zach. And this is Fresh Tactics. Hey guys, um, so we've got a topic for you today that will probably be a little bit more applicable to the coaches out there. Um, but, you know, when, when we're talking about it, I'd, I'd like to think that it's not just coaches that maybe, um, you know, athletes can glean something from this. And if you're an athlete, maybe it's something you can take back into your work life or, or anything along those lines. Um, and it's a lot of these topics are things that we like addressed with like our, our mentoring staff or our coaches, or they're really just like kind of soapboxy topics that me and AJ like get off on, like when we're talking. Have capital F feelings. Oh, yeah. About- it always starts with, let me explain this <laughs> reference to you, like what this reference means and how there is a greater meaning to life in our job because of comic books, pr- pretty much, or movies. Yeah, or in AJ's case, actual life experience outside of the Harry fictional Potter. world. Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, you're Harry <laughs> Potter. Um, so, uh, it's magical, okay? Yeah. Well, with that, uh, and we're actually we're actually video today. So funny enough, I have this uh, Wolverine coffee cup uh, going on because this is actually something that comes from a Wolverine comic. So we were talking one day, and I can't remember what got us to said topic, but we were just talking about coaching in general and like people's involvement, not just in coaching, but like maybe their own gym, like they own their own gym, and then like how they view themselves. And well, one of the things I I told AJ was that like. I love coaching. Like we call it on the floor and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably refer to it like on the floor too. Like I love being a floor coach, but I have like so much more stuff I do outside of that. Like eight other jobs. But I would never want to not be a floor coach. So we kind of were getting into that. You can see we're already starting to like spiral up. And I was like explaining to AJ and I was like, you know, it's, it's kind of like, um, are you like a street level hero? And she looked at, yeah, she like squinted her face and laughed I out. looked at Zach like he was stupid. Yeah, well, when I said it then, she like totally gave me a blank look. Like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, a street, like a street level guy. You know what I'm talking about? And she's like, no. I'm like, okay, well, here, let me explain. One, there, one time I played Street Fighter when I was in second grade. This, okay, this is, is the extent of my. This is nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with Street Fighter. Okay, it, keep going. It doesn't. <laughs> Why do you got to do that every time? This is a Wolverine thing too, and you should have pride in it because he's, he's Canadian he's a Canadian hero right and then one time I was like oh Wolverine's the only Canadian hero a superhero and Zach was like oh alpha team you idiot alpha flight oh sorry my bad see I still don't know anyway keep going anyways back back to it so there's this Wolverine um hero arc and I'm not gonna like ruin the plot for anybody out there because like, maybe you'll read it out I don't know anyways but this spoiler one spoiler alert these comics are 20 years old yeah but the idea with this one And this kind of goes, well, I'll make this like as like unnerdy for everybody as possible. People like the Avengers. People watch the movie, the Avengers. People think it's cool to like comics now. I get it. Cool, man. Like I'm like a comic hipster. Me and my brother, we've been. You did it before it was cool. Yeah, before it was cool. You know, like the culture war is over. Nerds won. (laughs) (laughs) Like we can, we can do whatever we want. Now, how does this apply to training guys? Um, So there was this, this Wolverine comic and in this particular comic, um, He uh, was asking about, uh, or no, excuse me, he wasn't asking about, uh, but he was conveying that there was, like, street-level heroes and then there weren't street-level heroes. And the idea behind that is, like, since everybody knows and likes the Avengers, if we think about the Avengers, they would be what you would classify as, like, a mega-hero, pretty much. And what I mean by mega-heroes, the mega-heroes are the ones that are really, like, uh, taking (laughs) taking on. I'm laughing right now because our dog's walking around being horrible. So if you see me, like, squinting around, it's because of that dog. Anyways, so the mega-heroes are the ones that are taking on Thanos, and they're doing all, like, the big-time stuff and things along those lines. And in this particular... uh, comic book arc like all the heroes were under attack and they were like getting taken out and stuff like that and then Wolverine was like you know they're going after the big names they're not going after the street level guys and the street level guys were like Daredevil and the Punisher and stuff like that and what wait they ma- Daredevil's blind yes Daredevil is blind <laughs> But what you meant by street level guys, like those are the ones in the comics, like you see, they're like taking care of like the everyday people, and like it does it. They're not taking on the intergalactic stuff. And so they're not is Spider Man a street level? That hero? could be up for debate. That could be up for debate. Okay, we won't. Enter yeah, we're not going to. We're not going to get. Right we're not going to get too far off that debate. But I'm know. glad I knew something. Yes, right? Yes. You could. You could venture to say that Spider Man is street level, um, and he might have even been referenced as a street level guy in that particular comic. I can't remember. But the idea with the street level comics or heroes is 
they're, they're still heroes and they're still doing it. They're just, their role doesn't seem as like astronomical and they're out there. And I think the, the thing that this podcast is actually based on is, are you a street level coach? All right. And that's really where we want to go with this. So we reference out the street level heroes. So you have this context of there are like the mega heroes and there are people out there and they're trying to do everything and take on the world and all this stuff. And I feel like when you start doing that, you start losing the connection with like the street, like the people that you originally started getting in there to help out and work with. So for me, like if I'm, you know, uh, funny enough, our friend Andrew came back into the gym today and he's literally said before, you know, Zach's kind of funny. He's like the only blue collar guy I know that travels the world to teach. And like, that's his job. And, and it is cool. And I do like being able to go out and like, Hey, where are you going this weekend? I'm, I'm going to Italy. How long are you going to be? I'll be right back. You know, it's like BRB yeah. going to Singapore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be in the air. 50 hours. I'm going to be in the air longer than that. And then I'm going to come back and, and then he's going to demand to be like, AJ, why didn't you schedule me in for a 6am this week? Uh, Cause you did a turn and bird to Singapore. Maybe you want to sleep in. No, I want to see my 6am people. Exactly. And it's cool. It's, yeah. it's fucking rad. Well, and, and that's the thing behind it. It's like, I'm still a floor coach. I'm still a street level coach. Like no matter where I go with that stuff, like I don't want to lose that connection. Now, if you're like, well, Zach, that, what, how's that apply to me as a coach? Like, what, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not going to be on like a, a seminar staff. I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to get out there, but people are losing that connection with being on the floor. Cause I do a mentorship program too. And a lot of coaches are like, when can I transition out of the role of head coach or running all the classes? And, and that to me, I'm like, well, why are you doing it? And CrossFit itself is going through this big like paradigm transition right now where it's getting back to the people. Mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm, like, exactly. our goal is, you know, the people on the couch and our goal. And like, everyone's laughing when they had media and the media has gone. Maybe, maybe it'll come back. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Yeah. Everybody was laughing. Guys like, are so safe. Yeah. They had old people with like the blue <laughs> water jugs and doing that kind of stuff. And it was like, this is stupid, but I'm like, who did you get into this to work with? And did you think you were working with Matt Frazier? And I do remember now what brought this about because uh, there was that thing where it's like, uh, Ben Bergeron runs the 930 class still. And I'm like, I think it's 8 a.m. class. 8 a.m. class. And I'm like, yeah. Oh. And he's like, I get it that Ben's got, and I, I always joke, like, I don't know Ben, but I always joke that I'm like, uh, I'm the complete anti Ben. Like, I, I don't oh, yeah. get enough sleep. I drink, I drink, I abuse coffee. We uh, drink coffee out on the floor. Sometimes we eat on the floor. I let my coaches and my interns wear jeans. Oh, fuck yeah. It's like, is this, a, is this coaching? a skate shop when you come in? <laughs> like, you know, I, it, to some people, it might seem uh, almost unprofessional at some point, but like the standard to which we hold these coaches is insane. Is unparalleled. Yeah. I and I'm say. like, you are going to be the best floor coach out there and you, you're going to crush this. So when I work with um, the mentorship program and coaches start talking with me and they're like, when can I transition out of the role? I'm like, well, why do you want to transition out of the role? Why are you even starting this? This isn't a cash cow. Like, you're not going to get flush with like cash and like, did you like crossfitting or running a gym or strength training or whatever you're doing? And mm -hmm. then from that, like find out like, Oh, well, I can have a side job and open a gym. And now like the gym's going to run itself and be self-sustainable and I'm going to get this extra capital and it's going to yeah. be awesome. And spoiler I'm like, spoiler alert. Yeah. Spoiler you're alert. not, you're probably not even going to be a hundred thousand air if you're running across the gym, like, yeah. just simmer down. Yeah, exactly. Well, so that idea of the street level coach is just something I really identify with because like I want to, to always be that and like it's like with you and me it's like the two sides of the coin that we talk about where like you're running some of the other stuff I even said it the other day and you kind of like like got your hackles up and like made a nose at me like <clears throat> and I was like because I was like hey I'm I was like oh I'll do the demo all day I'll teach this class all day I think it was the gymnastics day we were doing yeah and I was like because I'm the movement guy and you're like what does that make me well because it it because and that's the only reason that I felt upset about it is because I knew in my heart I wouldn't be able to be as good a demo as you were and my ego was a little bruised but there's things that you do that I can't do and I'm okay with that so it's like what's going to give the best experience for this class that could just sink it could exactly. totally sink exactly. and after, like, hey, and we're after gonna do a, I, uh, it was an hour and almost 90 and, minutes yeah. like I was running all my classes over and people loved it but I was like from the most simplistic basic basic level gymnastics to stuff that was a lot more challenging by the end. And I was like, how am I going to keep them engaged? And Let's swing on the parallel bars. Exactly. So like we were do, do as X says, not as he does. Exactly. Well, 
and so for me, like, I just loved getting out there and doing that. And I am not known as the gymnastics coach. I, I actually can coach anything, but it's like people are like, oh, Zach's the kettlebell coach. That's a whole nother episode. Coach. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll get into that at some other point. But, um, for me, I just, I like coaching. I like coaching. I like, I like the wads. I like, you know, I like, do, like here, you know, we're doing something super simple today. I'm going to explain it really in depth and then we're going to get after it. Or like today we just started this new block and I was explaining to everybody exactly how we wanted it to all go down. Even like on our uh, media account, we just started doing the RX daily dose just so people who are looking at the workouts realize there's a prescription behind it. And to me, again, that's not me trying to transcend being a street coach. I'm like, here's just what I would say to my class, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. and I get that there's the, the traveling and I get that there's the owning the gym and there's the nonprofit and there's like the The mentoring, the building. Yes. There's all these things that it seems like there's things that we're doing or or bringing new coaches. Are you bringing new coaches so you don't have to work as much? No, I I don't want to. In fact, hopefully they transition into these other jobs. Exactly. That I don't have to do so I can just coach. You best believe our new intern who has an English degree is going to write all our newsletters from now on. I'm not, I ain't doing that anymore. I want to be on the other side teaching class. Well, so I guess uh, part of this, because I could just go on and on about this, but so with the context of that, like, street-level coach thing, like, and you've been in a lot of gyms and, uh, you know, worked with a lot of different owners, and that's a kind of a weird thing. Like, I never wanted to be considered an owner. Like, I never wanted to. Like, Zach's the owner. Like, he's, what's what's he doing? I don't want to be absentee. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to mm-hmm. be there and I want to be present, and that's a big thing that I want to make mm-hmm. sure I'm doing. Um, so, I mean, like, what like when you were getting into work like i know maybe in the beginning you weren't thinking you were going to be a coach for forever i mean i'm sure you weren't you were in school doing a bunch of different stuff oh yeah i thought i was going to be a psychologist for sure yeah well i mean and and now you have to decode my brain most days (sighs) (sighs) should get paid more yeah there you go um but uh with that with that thought process like when you actually started kind of rooting into that you're coaching Mm -hmm. like what did you see and even like you as you know, we're both owners here, but you also kind of are the, the, the manager, you run the schedule and stuff like that. You've done a big thing about getting me off the floor a lot. Like you can't run all the classes, Zach, <laughs> you know, and, and it's very, it was very hard for me to do that, but it's been good. You know, it's been good too. It's been really good because then you're fully present when you are on the schedule, when you're on the schedule, it's your class. Yes. And obviously, I mean, obviously you're an owner. If you know, say for example, on that gymnastics day, one of our other coaches, you were like, hey, look, I'm going to teach this, but I want you to participate. You're still getting paid for the class, mm-hmm. but I want you to experience it as an athlete. And as an owner, you're, that's totally your prerogative, right? Mm-hmm. So. Well, so, like, really, like, what I was getting at with that is, like, where did you see, like, the level of, like, where you'd want to be, like, as a coach? Like, what, what was your thought process as a coach? Like, having been in other gyms and stuff like that and, working with other people like oh if I do get into this more as you started to like <coughs> maybe I'll like run five PTs a week and then work six classes a week and then oh yeah no it was um so I've I've been in all sorts of gyms with all sorts of owners from owners who were very present to owners who were almost completely absentee to owners who were absentee but because their day job was like coaching Olympic athletes so they were very much a street coach in both their jobs, which was a really interesting thing to see with Cam. Um, and obviously, he just had this this wealth of knowledge that was that really attracted me to his gym. And then, you know, but also in a very hands-off kind of like, okay, I'm going to let my coaches do their thing, which was an interesting work environment um, where I learned a lot. But I think for me, as soon as I started coaching, I was lucky enough to be at a gym where... I got to jump in totally head first. I offered to take on all the, we didn't have a 6 a.m. class, so I offered to take on all the 7 a.m. classes. So from the very, after I finished my whatever, three, four month internship, apprenticeship, whatever, I opened up the gym, wrote the workout on the whiteboard, coached the class, said goodbye to everyone, locked up the gym, went to class, and then would come back later in the evening to train but I had no oversight whatsoever it was just me like my first class I taught solo someone fainted they went vasovagal and just like I remember that oh dude but but um for me it was always very much like I took it as seriously as 
like a profession even before I knew it was gonna be my career. Yeah. And then I think the only, for me, the part that I like about the administrative stuff is that I know, I think much more so than you, that I'm pretty introverted and I can't give my all to every single class all day, every day, forever. I'm just, I'm not good at it. I can do it, but then I go home and I don't really talk to my family or my roommates and I just kind of crash and do it all over again the next day. So I like to have that balance between time to just work and feel accomplished in kind of a more administrative way. However, I think now I'm realizing more and more that I've left shifted way over to that managerial role that I actually want to offload some of those tasks so that I can get back on, on the, the floor. floor more often because that's where I want ultimately that's where I want to be and like you were saying it's the individual people that make it worth it for me yeah like to see athletes who want to compete for the first time or get their first strict pull up or whatever it is to be able to celebrate that with them means so much more to me than my own athletic achievements so much more well yeah i feel like that that should be a real and i feel like a lot of people and again if you guys are out there and i'm i'm talking about this and you feel like i'm attacking you then maybe you should take take that to heart that you're feeling like oh i'm falling because i hear that all the time i go out and listen to a whole bunch of other uh, coaches speak and talk and um, all that kind of stuff and sometimes when they're pointing out things that they think are good aspects of coaching or like um, good community uh, interaction and stuff sometimes I'm like I don't do that or I wouldn't do that and like why wouldn't I do that or why doesn't it fit the culture of our gym and things along those lines so you know I'm always like trying to figure out like what's best and like where I can potentially grow but I always know when I go back to it it's like on the floor and it's kind of like what you're saying like um you know, you're like you're an introvert and you feel like you can't like give it all. And if you're another coach out there, I know so many coaches that this is not like this is not what they would you would think that they would do with their time. Be it if it's a side job or something like that. Like that person seems very like yeah, I could almost use the word like mousy or like, you know, they just don't seem like they'd be like, ah, and like get somebody excited and then like break down the complex movements and they, cause they, it's like a different person, you know, like we used to joke, it's like bike club, you go in there and you become a different person. Some people allows them to or become like going a on stage. Person. Yeah. It's like your, yeah. it's your, your like performance persona that you. Well, if you want to talk about that, we can laugh about like going back to the uh, street level coach will step out of my street level thing. But like you were joking about me making fun of Martone cause he's, got a Boston, Tennessee, 18 broken nose, nasally voice that I can't understand. And he mumbles. She's, and you're like, you mumble too, Zach. And I was like, I know I mumble. And I was like, was I mumbling today at the course? Cause we taught a course over the weekend. She's like, no, I'm like, well, no, I don't. Like I 100% change as soon as I teach mm -hmm. a course. Mm -hmm. And it's my, it's like everything. And I give everything to my classes too, but like I do allow my brain to wander. And what I mean by that is like, maybe I'll talk and I'll kind of like, mumble my words a bit and stuff like that and someone will look at me and I'm like oh I need to like or you make different jokes in class than yeah. you do when you're teaching a seminar like it's just a different persona it's a you know yeah exactly so like it's like that on stage thing but um back to what you were talking about as far as the introvert thing like the first gym I opened up and I think I've told you the schedule before but I've I I would just pour everything oh damn that everything into nuts. everything all day so our schedule was it went six 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and then a 8 a.m. tier class or a foundation class. And then we had 9 and 10, and then we had 12. And then I think it was 4.30, 30, and 6.30. And I taught them all. Stupid. I taught them all Monday through Friday. Stupid. I taught every class. And I did that for years. And Saturday. And Saturday. And then in midday Sunday. And when people would, um, oh, yeah, I'd go home. And, and I, I used to write, the old, which is why we have the podcast now. I used to write the Old Country blog, and I'd be up till 2 two o'clock in the morning, whatever, getting my thoughts out or, you know, rearranging program off of what I saw and lesson plans and things like that. So when people would ask me, you know, well, when can I stop doing that? And like, I'm like, bro, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't stop working an insane amount of classes for years. I think it was like probably six or seven years before. Yeah. Before I really, really started with, I think. Take a step back. Yeah. I think it was, 
yeah, maybe six years in, like Lincoln started taking over. Oh, on Thursdays, yeah. yeah. And then, like at that time, like there were some classes that like coaches that started filling filling in, but there was no like dedicated day that I would try and be out of the gym. And even when I was supposed to be out of the gym, I'd be in the gym <laughs> because for me, even even when I was getting into these like grander things and doing a bunch of online stuff, working with like online athletes, which takes up a huge amount of your time, anyways. Um, I you know I was just like I see these people every day, like that that hour that I would see some of those people it was just as important to me and as it, it was to them because they were my friends yeah and like the day didn't see the day felt off if I didn't see them just like if they were missed a class I'd wonder where they were if I was out of a class they wondered where I was um, so I always kept that and that comes back it comes back to like hinge what we're doing here and like when you know when you wrote that uh, announcement that we were moving to our fourth location but we'd bought a building and part of it was that you said in there like Zach Zach loves his community. When I mean community, I mean Seattle. Like I love, mm-hmm. I love the city, and like my interaction with that is predominantly through my gym, and and so like I I need to see those people as part of it, and I've learned to kind of like taper that back to have the energy for the classes to be the best business partner I can as well, but you got to have that love of what you want to do, and it and just like a not the saying coaches are heroes, but hey guys, I'm with you out there like. Teachers get tired, nurses get tired, coaches, if you're working a lot, I understand you get tired. Um, it's that love of like, you know, maybe sometimes people understand what you're doing, but you're doing it. It's kind of like Batman, you go home and take off his, you know, his costume and he'd be all scarred and bruised up and beat up and then you put on a suit and he's Bruce Wayne and nobody knows what he was doing for them or, or all that, but he was doing it because he wanted to. And that was a big thing too. And I always like, it's why sometimes you and I have spoken on things. I'm like, I don't want anyone to know blank. I don't want anyone to know any hardships or things like that like their hour of their day is their hour of mm-hmm. their day mm-hmm. and i want them to have the heavy con- and like sometimes you can see i wear it on my face i know i got that i got bpd i can't help it sometimes but i still want the people to have like the best time and like part of that is like if this is the best job in the world and i know some people would say other jobs are different to me it is one of the best jobs in the world um and if it is the best job in the world you might not get paid that much for the best job in the world and you might not get thanked or think the way you want for the best job in the world. But if you want to have the best job in the world, that's what you have to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, to me, that's like the street level coach. Like you're still, you still have your finger on the pulse. And that's an important thing for like a bunch of big changes coming up. And I've heard that referenced out for other coaches that I work with that work in the bigger, broader department as far as like seminars and stuff. I'm like, did you lose contact with the CrossFit culture, the community? Did you take your finger off the pulse? Cause I didn't. And like, I'm Jeff's main line in because you know, he's just a different guy. He he helped set up kettlebells into CrossFit and created a system, and then he molded the coach that was going to keep his finger on the pulse, which was me. Well, and that would be my advice. Like Zach was saying earlier, if you if you're listening to this, you're like, well, that is not me. I want to transition to being a business owner and being like taking a step back from all that on the floor coaching. Then find someone who is as passionate as you can find, you know, as passionate as we are and have them be your on the floor coach, but you need to take the time to develop that and treat them with respect in all aspects of their job because they have their finger on the pulse and without them, you're not going to succeed. Can I tangent for one? I, I, as, as, as if, dude, even if I said totally, no. I totally just got triggered and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it and I'm going to do it on the podcast. It's like, okay, if you want to do that and you want to transition to be an owner, be a fucking owner. Don't preach about being a coach and how hard it is if you're not doing it. That's what I got to say. I know being an owner is hard, but being a small business owner in anything is, is hard. hard. Fucking hard. It's hard. All right, let alone if you're selling the service of coaching or CrossFit, strength training, selling coffee, um, trying to get your uh, logo design business off the ground. It is hard being an entrepreneur and it is not an easy thing, okay? But don't take on that mantle and let go of the coaching thing and still get up and be like, it's so hard being a coach when you're in fact you're tired from being a business owner. I totally get that, all right? But you have, like, don't, don't do that. Just. Don't take it away from the people don't, that are... Don't post that shit on your Instagram. We yeah. know. We yeah, know. Yeah, you're like, oh, it's so hard. I had to get up at, you know, this time today and da 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 and blah, blah, blah. And you know what? I don't have kids. So, like, there is that thing where I give so much more time because I don't have a family that I'm getting back home to. 
I do have dogs and I have a girlfriend and, and you know, I do like to get home now more often, but it's, I understand there's people trying to find that work life balance as well. Okay. But like, this is, again, this comes back to that street level coaching and I'm really passionate about it cause I love it. And that's why I'm a good, like, like a sounding board or, um, you know, mentor when I work with some of these coaches that work with abroad. Cause they're like, well, I don't want to be Zach. <laughs> like, I don't want to work that much. No, no one's signing up for that. They're like, but it's good to hear that there's like someone still so passionate about that, you know? And like, that's how they really feel. And like, that's my tangent on that. Like if you're going to do it, do it, do it, do it and, and be present, be a coach, get on the floor and work with somebody. When was the last time you like taught somebody how to deadlift for the first time? When, where, how are your basics? How are your basic mechanics when you're telling everybody oh. else to need to do it or your coaches need to, Here's or are you the one that can't? overhead squat and you're just like oh, I've always worked on it but never got better and you've been doing it for 10 years and you still can't do it <laughs> there's things that I'm not good at either and I try I couldn't do double unders when I started CrossFit I couldn't do them at all oh yeah you know what me neither so you know what I did I went in and coached when I had to clean the gym every week I would do airdyne sprints and then double unders when I could barely breathe and I would tell myself okay if you don't get 50 unbroken you have to keep doing intervals until you get 50 unbroken after your whatever 20 cows in the airdyne and it fucking worked and, and I, I don't do recommend that I do not recommend that to people to just do crazy amounts of double AJ how old were you when you were doing that 21 yeah you're 21 <laughs> all right and yeah yeah Kevin's you know what? Like, I Kevin's probably shaking his head. like I don't recommend that. I don't recommend. The, I also the, didn't warm up. Do yeah. as I say, not as I do. Don't be like me. Check out an RX uh, jump rope course from my boy Dave Newman. <laughs> he'll get you. He'll get you squared away. There's like resources out there. Yeah, now there is out. whatever. Yes. And like, I understand that. That's like the same. In thing 2011, with, there was none. And I'm the frequency method push up guy. I'm like, like you do a bunch of push ups, Zach, but it's also like controlled. Anyways, but the thing behind that is, you know, like you you want to have that connection still. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay. really important. Here's my tangent that I now need to go oh, on hit because me. Oh. yeah, just let it out. Let's get it going. Owners and coaches who go, oh, I have a brand new coach. I'm gonna let them teach on ramp or foundations. To That's break their in. job now. Yeah. No, you put your most experienced coach yeah. on on ramp, not your least experienced coach. Otherwise, people have no, they're not getting a good, they're not getting as good an experience as they could be, and it's not helping your classes run any smoother when you have the least good, I'm not going to say bad, but the least good coach you have yeah, least good, that's good way to say it. teaching them all their initial movements and who are probably not going to catch all the things that they could be, don't, don't do that. Yeah. Well, we're, we're a fundamentals gym and a fundamentals program. Like, we, that... You know, the same way we teach with like Kettlebell RX when we go out and teach the courses, like it is, it is fundamentals. You're just driven. It over is the way you've got to do yeah. this kind of stuff and hammer it into place to a point where people think our people are just like rock stars. We've had a bunch of new people coming into uh, the gym and they've had experience with other gyms, not just CrossFit, but other gyms in general. And they come in like, God, your people are so dialed. I'm like, they look just like you when, when they, they started. They had no idea how to use their hamstrings. I taught a course this weekend with established coaches and one of the guys was like an amazing olympic lifter and he's just like had issues getting in his hamstrings struggled his, his big beautiful quads were taken over all right and then like that's a skill too like developing this stuff is huge and you're you hit it right on the head as far as like it's really hard to want to give up the foundations the on-ramps to someone new they got to earn that just like when i the, my coaches will sweat more when i watch them teach the swing then if I'm like, hey, work on the snatch, and not a kettlebell snatch, a barbell snatch, like, and they're like, did that go good? I'm like, hey, you got everybody moving pretty well. There's some people that are limited in here, and they're working towards getting this this movement down. The but everyone should though, be able to swing. Yeah. So if if people aren't swinging right, that's something you did. Yeah, I'm like, how did you mess this up? You know, and that and that goes back to the. Sometimes you guys got to swing for the fences too when you're doing that. And as a coach, and again, that's that level of being a street level coach. Like you're gonna mess up. You're gonna mess up. Fail forward. Exactly. Fail for it. That is our number one thing. We say fail for it. If you're going to fuck up, buck, buck up, up huge. huge. You know, it's like, and that doesn't but mean don't be making the same yeah. mistakes over and over. It doesn't mean like you fail once yeah. and then you learn. It doesn't mean someone's safety guys. I don't want you to think that's what we're talking about, but like, Hey, I tried blank today while I was teaching. This is, this make it super simple. Like a, a, a bar over burpee. Like they're like, I tried this new, and you're like, probably like, what's that? Like there could be like, 
Yeah. And maybe it's like for time, like or like an open workout. Who knows? Whatever. But like, yeah, I was telling people to do this and step up like this and breathe like that, and it totally fucked everybody up. And like, as in, like they didn't do good, and it was like the class was like a mess because they were trying to hone their skills and fine tune it even on the basic levels. All right? Obviously, if you're like, hey you know doing something super weird with like you know a clean like a barbell clean like you know, like why would you do that that doesn't make any sense you know i was trying something new like yeah you definitely just fucking failed bad so don't do it again yeah like, can you learn from it now that re repetitive failure is gonna end up with consequences <laughs> but you know it's like hey man i'm not gonna fault you for trying like and if you're trying and like it's trying to become a better coach because you want that connection and you want the athletes to feel like you actually care and you're not just like a robot and just bah, 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 bah. like as I've had people do that too or it's like their voice is white noise and I'm like you're not gonna be a good you're coach not engaging or, yeah you're not engaging yeah you're not gonna be very good yep um, and that just rolls back around to the, again the street level thing I want to be a street level coach I want to be on the floor. I think that keeps me sharp for everything I do and it's why I got into this I had no goal orientation when I first got into coaching that I would teach seminars, post public programming, put videos up people would listen to, do a podcast. Be hashtag so Instagram famous. Not, but thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, also, hey, the more shirtless videos you post, the more followers you get. Okay. Um, check out, yeah, check out our, our actual channel, not my private channel. Um, <laughs> but no, the more thing about that is, like we really, we really, why I got into it, it's because I, I liked helping people. Like, I, I liked helping people from my previous professions. That rolled into helping people with private training, yeah. which is what I did, and that translated into CrossFit. I was like, oh, I can get it out there and get more to it. And to a, to a point now, you can even say we went, like, wholeheartedly street level. We dropped our prices. We, we dramatically slashed our prices down when we bought this building. Um, we have a sliding pay scale for people. We have a new bilingual class. We have a bilingual class. I'm going to, well, bilingual-ish, Spanglish. Yeah, I'm... I'm working Zach's on working so hard. I am. I'm he can count to 20 now. It's, it's funny, good. but it, that class is really good for me because I tell you, like, I'm uncomfortable <laughs> at that class because, one, it's a whole bunch of new people, and it's so good for me because I don't ever, like, it's a whole bunch of new people that all have been through foundations with AJ because she's handling that right now, so they have a really good intimate relationship with AJ. They feel like Zach's kind of scary, and I try not to be like I have funny jokes, but then, like, AJ has also worked with a lot of our... Um, our Spanish speaking athletes and my Spanish is so bad. Like I'm really good at like nonverbal communication from doing courses where it's, you know, like different language and stuff like that. So I'm really comfortable with it, but like I can't have the intimate laughing jokes and stuff like you do. So I've been doing my best with that. And I just feel like a little out of my element in my own class. And it's great because I'm 10 years into running CrossFit gyms. And that's the thing. Yeah. You know, like, what, I embrace what that. other, I think it's great. what other seminar staff are routinely feeling that discomfort and that learning yeah. in their own gym. So rare. Yeah, so it's it's been a really good it's been really good for me too, like uh, all that kind of stuff is, and it keeps me grounded. Like you gotta stay grounded. Mm -hmm. you, I had somebody tell me that once, and it, it still sticks with me. It's like don't take yourself too seriously. And when I heard that, because I, I was sweating some stupid details about something, and they're like, don't take yourself too seriously. And I was like, you're right, because my main goal was connection with. Mm -hmm my athletes mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff and a good experience in the class. And if I couldn't, it's like you walk that line of being like a crazy drill instructor and just got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. Cause you care so much that About they get the results, the, they get the yeah, results exactly. of the workouts mm -hmm, done correctly. Mm -hmm. And they're like, don't take yourself so seriously. They're moving, they're sweating. They're going to get better mm -hmm. because of that. And if you can crack a joke, they're having fun too, exactly. which means they'll come back. And, and that's the big thing for it. So when someone told me that, it didn't mean I uh, stopped taking the job seriously. I just, it was it allowed me to lighten my attitude because I cared so much, but I didn't want people to know that's why I was being harsh on them, that I cared, I care so much about you. That's why I mean, it sounds stupid. Sound like the, yeah. the disappointed dad. Yeah, it does, it does. And that's not what I want people, I want people to want to come in and do that because I care about being on the floor mm -hmm. and I want people to want to see me when they come in, mm -hmm. so. I don't know. I feel like we got a lot of that particular topic. Do you have anything else on that? I do. I have one more thing oh, hit me. on connection. I didn't know how we were on time. We're Which trying to I keep these ones a little shorter, but. Oh, yeah. I think we're past that. Um, when I was in, and this kind of brings it full circle for me, when I was in high school, I took a vocational test to see what jobs I'd be good at. 98% compatible with religious leader. I had a lot of feelings about that, and I went to go talk to my like school counselor or whatever, and I was like, explain this. Religious leader, huh? 
explain this, but the way they talked about that connection in the community that I was really well suited to, and lo and behold, I'm running a gym focus on connection and community and making sure that people are feeling supported when they're having a hard time, that they're being celebrated when they're improving or having mm -hmm. a good time. And that's, you know, that's all we want to do, right? It doesn't need to, you know, for some people it has a spiritual element, but it, it does. doesn't, doesn't mean it has to be. Well, and like, it's like that best hour of the day thing that's kind of beaten into the ground, but I do say it and I've been saying it for a long time, but it's also just like, some people just need that release. They need their time with the friends. They need to do these things or they need structure. Like mm -hmm. people can, can crave structure and I love like controlled chaos. So it's a fun element, but it's structure and they know they're going to come in and they're going to be safe and the coaches are going to care mm -hmm. because that coach or coaches in here want to be here. The first thing I ever ask an intern, if I feel like they're burning out is do you want to be here? And if it's just like, I, I don't know anymore. I'm just like, and your time here is done. And not like you're getting fired. I'm just like, you probably, it's probably time for you to get out and build your own culture and mm -hmm. do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had to like let anybody go because of that. Usually it revitalizes them. They're like, you're right. I, I hit that thing where I was oversaturated. Maybe they were giving too much themselves and they needed to pull back because they don't all need to be like me in here all the time. And I have you keeping me from overdoing that um, or getting off on too much of a tangent all the time. As a recovering Catholic, I think that's pretty funny that you were supposed to be a religious leader. So outstanding way to wrap this thing up. All right. Um, hopefully you guys were able to gleam something from that. Uh, hopefully it plays back into your everyday life or a better understanding of your coaches as an athlete or if you're a part-time coach. Like this gives you like kind of a segue into maybe how you can grow. Or a check-in as to why yeah. you're doing it. If you're a coach, like a head coach or like a major running coach, like assess how you're doing it. Are you doing it for the right things? Are you... Street level, as I'd like to say, are you still doing that? And if you're an owner, like, step back, man. Yeah, if step your back. calling is entrepreneurship, fucking yeah. go, go like pursue that. Is that is the hard. That is such a hard thing. And I have so many friends that it's just it's it's so hard. And I want I want so much success for them and what their their venture is, and it's hard. So I get that. If like as you as a gym owner, you want to be a gym owner, do that. Find a coach that wants to be a coach and let them do that and work together and create an awesome partnership. And I guarantee the culture of your gym will be better. Your community, if you want to look at it, will be better. And um, you'll probably just enjoy it even more. So that's what we got for you guys. Hopefully um, learning about Wolverine really helped you out with that. But hey, when all else fails, Fresh, fresh Tactics. tactics.